In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His blessing, mercy, grace, wisdom, now and ever into the age of ages. Amen. Today is the third Sunday of the blessed month of Ba'una, and uh, we have transitioned now from the Great Lent, the Holy 50 Days, which have all of their own readings for every Sunday and every weekday um, of the month, and we're going back to the annual schedule where we have each theme has, each month has a theme. And within that theme, first, second, third, and fourth Sundays um, connect to that major theme. So this is the Sunday of Ba'una. And since we just celebrated the feast of last week, Pentecost, um, we have the, the theme of the Holy Spirit for, for this month, and actually more than one month. Um, <clears throat> and we're just entering into the third Sunday because, as you know, the Feast of the Resurrection uh, varies, the date varies from year to year. Um, and so uh, because Easter fell, the resurrection feast fell a little bit later than usual, we're jumping into the month in the middle of the month. Um, <clears throat> so here the Lord heals the man who was blind, mute, and demon-possessed um, in the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 12. And we see how he does this by what he calls the finger of God. What, what, how, do, how do we explain this? What, what does the finger of God mean? in uh, what is the Lord Jesus Christ referring to? Take a guess. The Holy Spirit, right? So he says, if I do this by the Holy Spirit, then, he, well, before this, he heals the man, right? And they begin to judge him in their hearts and criticize him, saying that he does this by the power of Beelzebub or the devil. So he said, how is this possible? If I'm doing this by the power of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, how, how can you do this? How can you say this? Um, <clears throat> and he, and as, as uh, St. Matthew describes, he knew their thoughts, again, by the Spirit of God. Um, and then he starts speaking about uh, the impossibility of uh, a group or organization or an army or a house that's divided against itself can't stand. So if the devil does this by the power of the devil to fight against himself, the devil will not have as much power um, as it does. Um, <clears throat> of course, not compared to God. Um, so that's why he says, if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. We can talk about um, the different wars that we face. Um, and fighting a battle with a certain enemy is one thing. But when the enemy is from within, it takes on a completely different um, nature. Um, sometimes when we're fighting this inner battle, um, we're not clear who the enemy is, where he's coming from, or how he's fighting. Uh, same applies with war within a country, um, or a family, or even within a person. <clears throat> um, spiritual wars come in different types of attacks, and the devil fights us in many different ways. Um, oftentimes, those are external. Nowadays, maybe even more prevalent are the inner conflicts and uh, battles that we face um, inside of ourselves. And if you take the blind, mute, and demon-possessed um, symbol here, we can be, so this inner battle can lead to our blindness, so we don't see things clearly, or we don't have the wisdom of God and the understanding of God, we become mute, so we decrease our communication with God and with others, and we become not necessarily demon-possessed, but the devil allows us to think the way that he wants us to think, okay? Um, and not necessarily from the devil's work. Sometimes it's just when we get to this state, our thoughts are completely um, ungodly. Um, whether they are thoughts of anger, they thoughts of bitterness, of envy, of frustration, of, of lust, of troubles, of confusion, of doubts, we can go on, of sadness, of anxiety. All of these oftentimes have a way that affects us spiritually and even physically and emotionally as well. Um, <clears throat> and this is not just alien to the person far from God, but even um, the those who are the people of God can be 
afflicted by these conflicts or by, by the, this attack. Even St. Paul talks about this in 2 Corinthians where he says, we, when we came to Macedonia, our bodies had no rest and we were troubled on every side. He said, he said outside were conflicts, but inside were fears. This is Saint, the great St. Paul is saying, we were afraid. Um, <clears throat> and so, but then he says, nevertheless, God who comforts the downcast, downcast comforted us. Um, <clears throat> so uh, even though we are as Christians in this world, um, in this tempestuous world, like the sea, um, we try by the grace of God to rise above and to walk on water. But we need the Lord. Um, <clears throat> and the goal is to have the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Against whom there is no law, as St. Paul continues. W what does this mean? <clears throat> um, as St. John Chrysostom says, the good works require not only our, the resolution of our will, or for us to be con convinced that, that we need it, but also the grace or the kindness of God. <clears throat> and then when St. Paul says that when we uh, have the fruit of the Spirit, we walk in the Spirit, and the law is not against us. Um, the Fathers explained this by saying, uh, or St. Augustine says, the law must be opposed, uh, imposed on those in whom these excellent behaviors do not already reign. Meaning, if we are living in Christ and we are living a spiritual life, then we don't need necessarily to follow the law of the Old Testament because we have already fulfilled it uh, by the grace of God. <clears throat> and this is what our Lord meant when he um, was tested by the rich young lawyer and, and he asked him, what is, what is the greatest of the commandments? Um, did he list the 600 or so different commandments mentioned in the Old Testament? No, he just said two things. Anyone remember? Actually, one thing, but directed in two ways. Love. He said, love for God and love for your brother. And if you uh, fulfill this commandment, you, you, have, you have fulfilled the rest of the world. Um, <clears throat> so this is the idea of when we are spiritually minded and spiritually focused, uh, we are able to overcome these conflicts. <clears throat> so that's basically the, the first point of how we overcome this conflict within, Wh whatever it looks like for, for you, because each person has their own different battles that they, that they face outward as well as inward. Um, of course, the one that, all of, that pertains to all of us is that of sin. Um, <clears throat> but when we become weaker, spiritually, uh, the different temptations and trials and in in, in conflicts within might vary from person to person. <clears throat> so the first way that we arm ourselves with the power of God to attain the Holy Spirit so that the devil has no effect on, on allowing us to become blind mute and, and our minds changed or, or in the wrong way is that we have to be above all things. Or to, as St. Paul says, set your mind above uh, where Christ is, <clears throat> uh, seeking the things that are above, or where Christ is sitting, seating at, sitting at the right hand of God. Um, so, so set your minds on all things above, not on the things of the earth, in Colossians 3. Um, and so when our minds are tempted to think about something, to be angry, or to be um, full of lust, or to be bitter, or to be jealous. You say, okay, let me set my things on, the, set my mind on the things above, not the things of the earth. So for sure, we're thinking about the worldly things too much. And so we turn to scripture, we turn to prayer, we turn to contemplation on the things of heaven, and this will reroute our thoughts up, not down. Because the more we think about, so, and usually if the person gets tripped up with one thing of the earth and they get frustrated and they'll go to another circumstance and the same thing will happen and even worse. So what am I trying to say? And I think I've said this before. If we have, um, let's say, uh, let's say I'm, I'm being battled with the thought of anger. 
right? And something happens at work and I get angry at all the people around me. It doesn't stop there. And then I go home and then I get angry at the people, everyone around me. Then I go to church and I get angry at them. So the problem is not uh, my boss and my family. And, no, the problem is inside. <laughs> and, and, and I was not able to set my mind on the things above. So it became manifest. And so then what do I do? I have to, uh, number one, be aware of this and to ascend with my thoughts. Um, and then don't take action. As, as the Lord says, be still and know that I am God. Um, because we have to do what we have to sit with ourselves first. Before you start making decisions in, in this uh, frame of mind, which is kind of like demon possessed, because this is not who you were called to be, um, <clears throat> we have to take assessment and then let God work inside of us. Um, and it's, it's easier said than done. Um, and the, then we go to the church. Then we go to the confession. Then we go... Um, to cast all our care upon him, for he cares for us. Um, <clears throat> and we cast our burden on the Lord, the burden of sin. Um, and, and we come to him, we who are heavy laden, right? Um, and labor so that God can give us rest. The confession is not supposed to um, cause more uneasiness, but it's supposed to give us rest. God wants to take the burden from us that we already have, not to add a further burden. Sometimes we misunderstand um, what is going to happen in repentance and confession. But the whole purpose is for God to lift the labor of sin, or the lift the burden of sin from us. Um, and uh, then we do what we can. As uh, St. Augustine says, pray as if everything depends on God, and then work as if everything depends on you. Um, so we can't just throw the burden to God and then do nothing and then repeat the cycle again. I don't know what's happening. Uh, same problem. I, I went and I repented and then it's happening all over again. Well, maybe we didn't change anything um, that we could have changed to prevent. Um, so we do what we can. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Usually, it's because we're still attached to the things of the world, not only with our minds, but um, in, in our daily life. And this is what the Desert Fathers talk about, being detached from the world. So St. John uh, of the Ladder, or Climactus, he says, uh, I have observed many people in the world that are assailed by these thoughts, uh, anxiety and worry. Um, and then he says, you can't attain the, the crown of the heavenly bride chamber, or attaining the king of heaven, without first making three um, renunciations or detachments. Um, he says, first, the person has to turn away from the worldly concerns of men. Of course, some people say, oh, this is just applied to the monks and nuns. No, uh, the Christian has to attempt to turn away from the concerns of the world, not from the world itself, but not to let it be consumed in, in our thoughts um, too much. The second thing we have to cut, cut away um, selfishness, um, because usually, as uh, Saint James says, "Where do the wars come from among you? Among you, um, from from your desires, um, from the from the love of the world and the love of the self." And because I want this for myself, or, or I want this worldly thing, and this person or this uh, interaction is preventing me from having. Uh, what I want, then the argument uh, ensues. <clears throat> and thirdly, he says, he must rebuff the vanity that follows obedience. And in a sense, this is similar to um, the monastic um, vows of, of poverty, chastity, and obedience, but it applies to a lesser degree for each of us. Um, to turn away from the worldly things, we all have to do that to some extent, or else we'll be carnal and we will live like everyone else in the world um, and, and not have a heavenly goal. Um, <clears throat> and the goal is to be like what St. Augustine says, I sat on top of the world, on the summit of the world, um, when I felt within that I didn't desire anything or fear anything. So our goal is to be fearless and to be uh, needing nothing. Um, and 
it's hard to attain that uh, goal if we're not growing in the spirit. <clears throat> so just to conclude, um, in order to be free, to free our minds and our eyes and our hearts from, from the work of the devil or from the, the evil things, we need to be aware, we need to ascend or to go above um, with our minds the things on the heaven and not the things of the earth, to be still and know that he is God and to allow him to do his work and then to do what we can um, by casting all our care on him for he cares for us and to truly repent and confess so that he may free uh, us from these burdens. And then we do what we can after that so that we don't repeat the same cycle. Um, and oftentimes when we repeat, it gets worse and worse rather than the better. Um, and then we detach uh, by the grace of God um, from the worldly uh, things and the worldly concerns. May the God of all grace give us the spirit of victory that he sent upon the church on the day of Pentecost to, to grant us the ability to, to not be afflicted on the inside from uh, the temptations and trials and uh, evil uh, or worldly thoughts. And glory be to him now and from today.